that is where the TRI algo crossed bearish. And you could make the argument that we had bearish divergence in momentum noted here. And of course, if you look at all the indicators, a whole bunch of bearish divergence. We had a trade location. We were right up against the top end of the range. And we were also at fog and bomb levels. So you could make the argument this was a half decent place to be thinking short. You want to use the TRI algo as another indicator confirmation signal? Fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever uh, with you trading setups. And if you want to use this as your second reason to justify taking a trade, i.e. indicator confirmation, great. But that doesn't excuse you from being religious about trade location. And it doesn't excuse you about using things like price structure to frame your trade. <laughs> I had said earlier, you know, if, if you're coming on and you're brand new to the site and you're kind of like, oh, I got to get my sort of conoidering. And of course, I bought this breadth indicator tool. You can just come in here into the search box and just type in breadth. And what comes up? That's what this box was. Basically, every reference, Chris diarizes, and also too, we used to have Herrera's also do the write-ups for these videos, but you can see lots and lots of references to the breadth. I mean, you could do it, whether it be the Broiler Chicken Show uh, or Daily Briefs, uh, there's lots and lots of videos, just even over the past two or three months that we made reference to the breadth. As well too, uh, we have like little cheat sheets, you know, so a lot of people came on the site when we first got this thing up and running and we're just like how do we use this thing and i just put together a really simple so whoever was asking about this just grab this image and i think it's actually in the library i'm not even quite sure yeah library items tri breadth indicator cheat sheet so actually in the library itself question is you know this library is getting so big now where on earth do you find all this stuff daily breath we might actually even have a breadth indicator talk in here cheat sheets maybe over here we have it all right yeah here we go so TRI breadth indicator cheat sheet, TR breadth indicator screenshot 2022 S&P 500. Here's a pretty good example of how uh, all of them should look at any given point in time. What I would suggest is, you know, just go through all of this. And of course, you know, in the TRI user's guide, which uh, should be user's guide, I think is actually right in here. TRI user's guide right here. Uh, you should be able to scroll down. And of course, here is like signals and breadth. So number seven, uh, we can scroll down and uh, take a look at uh, the way that we have this all laid out for you. Uh, Josh did such a great job. It's really, really simple stuff. Um, and then of course, some performance uh, data, along with things like the histogram, how you would interpret that. That's there to help you. And really what I would just simply say is that just keep this as simple as possible, right? We've got the red lines to uh, denote overbought and oversold. So if you've used things like stochastics or RSI or, you know, CCI or Williams percentage R, they all have overbought, oversold. I mean, this is technically an oscillator. So that's the way these things work. And then of course, just crosses, uh, across down is bearish, across up is bullish. That's pretty straightforward. To use this in simplest terms, like I said, I mean, really, what I would just follow the user's guide exactly as it says here, really simply put, as I had said, you, you can see on the screen overbought, oversold. Ideally, we'd love to have these signals come in when, you know, buy signals come in when we're oversold, sell signals come in when we're overbought. And that just, that's just common sense, right? Oscillators overbought, bearish signals comes in, probably a good idea for you to be thinking short. When you get a situation like this, where we're kind of in no man's land, we're right in between, I don't know whether there's actually a really good trade signal per se. Uh, as well too, um, and Josh actually made reference to this before, I think it's in the user's guide, but I'm not positive. Yeah, you can sort of see, you know, he's got one signal here where you can see one is crossing the other with the slope up and the slope is down. I think the best signals, and if you want to try and write this down, the best signals come in, the bullish signals come in when the teal or slow indicator is trending up. So where's a good example? This isn't a bad example over here. So you remember back 
back last March, remember we talked about how uh, the QQQs and all of them put in big buy signals, outside upside key reversals and stuff. Notice that the uh, the indicator crossed up, but Teal was was pointing down. Here. I would call that a weak signal. Notice a little bit later on though, we start pointing back up, we cross up, and now Teal is pointing up. I would call that a stronger signal. And I like those signals. They're, they're the most powerful, I think. And then conversely, on the other side of this, you get a signal where the fast is crossing below the slow, but teal is still pointing up. I would call that a weak signal. Here, for example, uh, we got a fast crossing below the slow, but teal is pointing down. I would consider that a strong signal. So uh, try and keep that in mind. Um, seeing it like here's a good example. This would be a weak signal here where fast is crossing below teal, but over here, fast is cross and, and teal still pointing up, sloping up. Here, fast is crossing below teal, slow, and teal is pointing down. That's a very strong signal. So make note of that. I think that works very, very well undo itself. We did just get, you know, here was an interesting sell signal from Bitcoin off of the crypto top 30. Teal was still pointing up though. So I would call that a weak signal. And it took a while for the market to actually roll over here. Uh, we had a, a little fast signal here. Then we had a breakdown. Uh, then we had basically a break back up. And, you know, Teal was still kind of pointing down. But I do like the fact that we were oversold here and we got that cross back up. That was that signal that when I was on vacation vacation. And of course, the market rallied about 10, 15%. Then as you can see, just the other day, we happened to get a sell signal, fast cross below uh, the slow. Teal's still pointing up and we're not even really overbought. So I would still consider this a weak signal. I wouldn't really consider it a really strong signal, um, which means to me, and considering that, remember I had said earlier, this is a big options expiry event here. I think that they just want to park the market here. Today, if we actually look at the signal, that is where the TRI algo cross bearish. And you could make the argument that, you know, we had bearish divergence in momentum, right? Noted here. And of course, if you look at all the indicators, a whole bunch of bearish divergence. We had a trade location. We were right up against the top end of the range. And we were also at fog and bomb levels. So you could make the argument this was a half decent place to be thinking short. So we had trade location. We had indicator confirmation. You want to use the TRI algo as another indicator confirmation signal? Fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Uh, but that I don't want to hear people just saying, well, you know, the algo cross bullish, the algo cross bearish. So I'm just taking that signal blindly. That's not how this trading thing works. And, you know, to the people that are just joining the site and that, hey, I just subscribed to this. OK, great. You can use this signal in conjunction uh, with you trading setups. And if you want to use this as your second reason to justify taking a trade, i.e. indicator confirmation. Great. But that doesn't excuse you from uh, being religious about trade location, and it doesn't excuse you about using things like price structure to frame your trade. And then, you know, in the free video this morning, I had sort of pointed out that, yes, we did have a bearish situation with the algo, but the traders trade here this morning, and oh, wow, was it ever a trade there, was to hit that reload zone in the reload zone, that level right there, which produced that insane dump. Yes, we have the algo sell signal. Yes, we do have bearish market structure. And and now we have even more bearish market structure. I would be very surprised if this thing actually did, you know, rebound higher in earnest. I mean, but the market will do any old damn thing it wants. So everybody remember that. But and I would argue that we do have another M top that's come in here. But why do you think that they've just stopped? You know, like this market was dumping. And the SEC, of course, said, you know, uh, we're going to crap all over you. Uh, and there's no way you're going to get that ETF BlackRock, even if you are BlackRock, where it's just not going to happen. So I like the idea that this thing has probably run into a, a selling level. But why do you think that maybe price is just stalled here? Is there something going on today specifically that I talked about at length that maybe they have a vested interest 
and making sure this market goes out exactly where it is right here. I think that there was a top and this is sort of the sell pattern, right? This is the four hour chart. If we go to the daily chart, which first looks like gobbledygook here, because this is my four hour. Let's go back to the daily over here. That's what this trade is here, that inside bar failure. And really all that's graded now, this trades back underwater. So we were like, oh boy, are we going to get stopped out? And, oh boy, look how smart we are. And oh boy, now it's basically a big hurry up and do nothing day. So that's what I think is going on here. And what you just have to understand with the algo is that there might be situations where you get like an algo sell signal and then a day or two later, it flips back to the bull side. Just because the algo fires, there's no guarantee that it's the market's going to do anything. I definitely think that when, if the algo is pointing one direction or the other, then that's sort of the impetus of where the market wants to go. But the market can do any old damn thing at once. And if this thing wants to bottom and then turn back up, it can. And you might just get, because keep in mind, this algo, you might just get the algo actually bottom out here and flip back to the buy side. And if that's the case and you trade the algo, then you got to be hunting long. And uh, TBG just asked there in the in the lounge with regard to how you are trading this algo, Brian. And this just happens to be the way that I am trading this. And keep in mind, I got a signal there while I was away on vacation. Uh, I actually closed this out when I went out on vacation. It was a small profit, so there's nothing wrong with that. But I haven't taken any signals. And of course, this is long only. So this latest sell signal, if anything, it's music to my ears because I'm not shorting this based on this trading plan. This is long only. But based on this, um, I'm just basically sitting here waiting for the next buy signal. When the next buy signal is generated off of this, then I will just go in and on that 930 bar, whatever. And, you know, it's just really a function of whenever this signal is actually generated. And keep in mind that the signals are generated by the system automatically. And what I've just been simply doing is if I see the signal come in, Whatever that 930 bar close is, if I do get a buy signal, I, in essence, entered the order at that specific level and I got filled uh, about 12 hours later at that specific level. And uh, and that's basically how I'm trading this now. And, and keep in mind, this will be subject to revision because I would like this signal to be generated on the actual close, the daily close. And for me, Pacific time, the daily close is like 4.35 o'clock my time. So I would like that signal to be generated a little bit earlier in the day. Having said that, right now, uh, we had a little bit of a breakdown here. So as a result, that happened a couple of days ago. And as I showed you uh, on the actual Bitcoin chart itself, I actually don't mind the signal. The signal actually looks like it was basically accurate. There's a big old M top that fired. This is when the signal came in, you know, like really uber timing your trade. There was a reload zone within a reload zone trade right there. The market dumped. It actually confirmed this even bigger M. So I actually like the short trade here. The only issue is, like I said, we've got this options expiry going on today. So I just wonder whether they, they really want this thing parked right around this 30,000 area for the options expiry. And frankly speaking, if if you said, well, Brian, you know, I am interested in joining that short trade on Bitcoin. Here we are at Mountain Man level. So, you know, you want to join, and there is the original M top. I really wouldn't have a problem if you were like, well, you know, indicator confirmation, that's pointing down. I've got price structure to work with. Of course, we had all those bearish divergences that I showed you earlier. Can't remember which chart that was. One of these charts, right? All these bearish divs. I want to join this trade, all right? There's an M. So in essence, all this is, is just simply, uh, I'm going to try and get short off of that M. I will risk to new highs. And of course, I'm going to shoot for two to one to take partial profits. Uh, if this level is traded to, uh, take some profits, move your stop to scratch maybe on the remaining and just see where the hell the wind blows. If we go up through the top here, my hunch is this is going to turn back bullish and then we go back to hunting longs. So I hope that helps uh, explain that uh, a little bit better.